This is John Wecker with WBBA TV. And I'm joined today by Dr. Carla Grandori. Dr. Grandori is the founder of Cure First as well as the CEO of Sengen Precision Medicine. I hope I got that right. Dr. Grandori, yeah. thank you for joining us today. I wonder if you could start thank by you. telling us a little bit about the mission of Cure First. Yes, um, in very simple terms, uh, Cure First uh, wants to accelerate over a thousand times how we identify less toxic and more targeted treatments for cancer. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, this is not an easy task. Uh, we have 30,000 genes mm -hmm. to sort through. And uh, right now in the clinic, there are about um, two dozen targeted therapies against um, genes, about 2,000 genes. There might be more targeted therapy, but the targets are pretty much the same. So we want to change that and increase the menu of potential targeted treatments. Mm -hmm. Um, really, the vision is uh, in the near future, cancer could be tackled by a simple cocktail of targeted drugs, mm -hmm. and we can abandon altogether uh, the harsh uh, chemotherapy mm -hmm. regimens. Mm -hmm. So, and again, it's not an easy task. And have you seen uh, the movie The Imitation Game? Yes, yes. Did you like it? Yes, very much. Okay. Well, I also loved it and mm -hmm. I was struck by how Alan Turing had to insist with the British government to have a machine built so that he could accelerate how they would decode Enigma which mm -hmm. was the Nazi code and so although they were the most brilliant mathematicians you can imagine the most brilliant scientists trying to solve Enigma was hard and would have taken 40 years without a machine mm -hmm. So this is why Cure First proposes to use this high throughput equipment, robotics, computers, and bioinformatic tools to accelerate how we decode cancer cells. Okay, very good. Now well, that's exciting. And um, yes, I understand this high throughput screening, functional genomics. Tell us a little more about the technologies that you utilize, you utilize in order yes. to accelerate and meet the mission of Cure First. Yes, oh, I wish I brought my little tray to, to, uh, to really explain, but basically um, we use robotics equipment that instead of performing one experiment at a time, can test 400 or 1,000 different genes, and we use RNAi interference, okay. uh, and then we, the results are integrated with the genomic knowledge mm -hmm. for a given cancer types. And so we are able to pinpoint in a given cancer cell of an individual what are their dependencies, mm -hmm. and which might be uh, not just restricted to what genes that are mutated, that, which is the majority of the approach mm -hmm. that we hear today. Wow, that's really fascinating. Um, so I understand you also um, have done some creative fundraising. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us a little about how the fundraising is going, what your experience uh, was? Yeah. Well, that was a new venture as a, as a scientist, um, but I have to say that um, I found an amazing, um, how would I say, um, among friends uh, and colleagues, it was really amazing to see the level of enthusiasm in, in helping out with Cure First. Mm -hmm. And so we reached out to artists, uh, writers, and others that could help us communicate. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think, uh, you know, we have, considering we have only been uh, alive for a couple of years, we have donated $50,000 to the University of Washington oh, wow. for carrying out high throughput screens in uh, ovarian and breast cancer, mm -hmm. and we named the project Project Sweetheart. Oh, very nice. Inspired by a family uh, that came to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yes. you, you successfully employed crowdfunding to help advance uh, your research. Well, yes, uh, yeah. crowdfunding and uh, some local events. Um, now we, you know, I have a lot of very creative people that come up <laughs> with ideas. Good, yeah. good, good, good. But I think we do need uh, higher level partnerships and uh, a partnership with pharma and with uh, biotech, mm -hmm. I think will greatly help. And this is why uh, we now founded Sengen Precision Medicine. Yeah, let's talk well. about that a little bit. Can you tell us about Sengen Precision Medicine and the relationship with Cure First, if there is one? Just tell yes. us a little about it. Um, so it's all very new. So I think all the uh, 
details are not going to be, um, you know, need to be ironed out. But uh, the idea is that Cure First is going to perform the research. Mm -hmm. It's going to set up a collaborative, uh, connected laboratory that acts as a hub to collect research samples uh, from all over the country. Right now, we are expecting samples actually from Philadelphia, from CHOP, the Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we'll then return these results back to the investigator and build this knowledge database. While Senjin is going to apply what has been already uh, been obtained using this technology. Mm -hmm. And most of the intellectual property is um, connected with the Fred Hutchinson. Mm -hmm. So uh, Senjin is a spin-off of the Fred Hutch. Okay. And uh, it will um, um, plan to do two things, develop new drugs, and also set up a CLIA certified lab that will perform these high throughput tests for patients. So I can envision that the research that will be done by Cure First will generate intellectual property mm -hmm. and uh, Senjin will help, uh, we plan to help giving fellowships to sign young scientists that work for Cure First and the intellectual property will remain with Cure First but uh, Senjin will have the first right refusal option to license such uh, inventions so that we can help uh, Cure First grow um, and potentially you know, establish partnership with other pharma as well. Wow, wow, it's, it's, I've really enjoyed listening to you. You're a true visionary and, and I can see now why you're one of the women of the year to watch uh, honoree <laughs> and congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. So I'm, I'm wondering if, if, if uh, a, a young, woman was looking to start her own company to be a CEO, what, what kind of advice would you give her to, to help her along? Yes. Um, the, I have two advice. Okay. The first one is do not hide, okay. as I did for many years, uh -huh. which is find a balance between working in the lab, uh, juggling a family, but also be active participant of the scientific community. So organize meetings, uh, sit, have a seat at the table when there is a meeting, don't sit in the back row. Mm -hmm. And so this really active participation and be highly collaborative. And I think this uh, might bring to the next point, which is I think women should just follow their nature of being collaborative, generous, caring, mm -hmm. uh, because it, is, it helps establish a network mm -hmm. And uh, without this network of friendships and good collaboration, it's, very, it's impossible mm -hmm. to someday lead an enterprise or, and even it's an example of leadership. I think we're moving away from the single scientist yeah. working at the bench. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's too many uh, expertises are needed yeah. so, to really make progress. So um, I think that's um, my two pieces of advice. Very good. Yes. Well, my last question, you, you mentioned networking, of course, we're here in Seattle and, mm -hmm. and, and it's a Life Science Innovation Northwest Convention, so um, do you have any thoughts on networking here in Seattle? Is it strong? Is it supportive? Has it been tough? What, what, what are your views no, on that? Oh, I think it is, uh, it, I think it's good. It's mm -hmm. relatively easy and this meeting is great for it mm -hmm. and uh, I think the WBBA is a, it's a wonderful organization that facilitates these interactions. So um, almost perhaps because we're smaller than other cities, I, I feel that uh, there is a true chance uh, to be working together. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to interact with other uh, companies that are presenting uh, today and you know, from Seattle Genetics to Blaze uh, to Juno, there is really a lot um, to choose from for local partnership. And I am a fan of uh, the, the Northwest innovation spirit, mm -hmm. and I'd like to end you with one okay. personal story. Please. So um, I have this sense of excitement being in this meeting and in general uh, being in this community. And I think the same excitement uh, was contagious to my father that came here in the 70s uh -huh. and was an engineer and met one of the pioneers that developed the first tunnel boring machines. Oh, wow. okay. And they partnered together, and my father has patents developed on modifying these machines to uh, be used in the terrains of Europe. 
So uh, I came here at 16 years old and I was amazed of the spirits of innovation and technology. So for me, it's, it's, I'm closing a circle, yeah. if you wish, uh, with That's this. That's a wonderful story. No, it's really yes. been a pleasure talking with you. <laughs> so we've been talking today with Dr. Carla Grandori. Dr. Grandori is the founder of um, Cure First, as well as the CEO of Sengen Precision Medicine. Dr. Grandori, thank you for taking the time to talk to us.